Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and today we're bringing you a battle report from the bridge of Tier 6 Japanese heavy cruiser, Alba. It's been a while since I've done a battle report on Alba, probably probably coming up on a year now since I reground the Japanese cruiser line. I had a couple of games in this ship that were worthy of showcasing. And I'm bringing you this game particular, in particular because it, it highlights kind of a theme I've been on of late here on the channel, talking about cruiser games, talking about just being as irritating, obstinate, and stubborn, and I will not go out of this game one second sooner than you guys can make me um, on here on the channel. I just, I, I've had a series of games here that, that have just kind of highlighted that trade in cruiser play, and I want to keep pointing them out because I feel like I keep seeing players maybe just kind of throw in the towel. Oh, I'm on 2000 HP, I'm done for. And they just sail at the enemy until they're dead. And that just, that irritates me whenever I see it. So I'm trying to combat that mentality, let's say. The title of this video, I'm going to mispronounce this, but is Shitsukai, which if I, if Google is not lying to me, is Japanese for obstinate. And you'll see exactly why I've chosen that title for the video as we go on. Starting here on the south side of Neighbors, Enemy carrier is, thankfully, only a tier 6 Ryujo. That means I'm going to be able to at least, you know, do some damage to his planes. Alba, like most Japanese cruisers, does not have much AA worth mentioning. I put a fighter plane up there, uh, thinking he might come uh, run at me or, or maybe swing around and try for the Fantastic, and I wanted to be able to provide a little bit of cover. But these mid-tier fighters on cruisers are only two planes. You're not getting a significant chunk of their squadron size. Um, it's actually something I've started kind of uh, considering doing on my on my mid-tier heavy cruisers is is taking that direction center for fighter skills for that extra that extra fighter and then of course superintendent just straight up gives you an extra charge of the fighter plane, but it's nice to have. Enemy Fubuki gets spotted there in the gap. I I speculatively dump the torpedoes in that direction, thinking eh maybe he'll blunder into them. Who knows? Now I'm coming out on this flank here to the north. Ordinarily, the way most teams end up lining up on uh, here on Neighbors is there's a real heavy push to the north, right? They've sent battleships and cruisers, and you can see there one of their destroyers up here, that enemy Benson. And so I am coming this way with the cunning plan of setting this ship up to do some kiting, because that is what these Japanese cruisers, heavy cruisers, do best when you're able to line them up that way. They make great kiters, with especially Alba, whose torpedo angles, you may have noticed a minute ago, are not that great. They look, they're really, really bad uh, in terms of trying to use them to push and push a ship out of position, but they're fabulous if enemy ships are pushing at you. You can throw those torpedoes back in their face and make a mess of them. My friendly Lefant task up in front of me dies because he thought it was okay to be out here by himself, all alone, spotted by a bunch of ships, and is now dead. So, pro tip, guys. I don't care what destroyer you're playing. Don't do that. Especially a French destroyer whose main, main defense is speed and this guy's rammed into an island not going anywhere now i'm fishing for this benson in smoke because i know he was in a gunfight with that fantastic and i suspect he's very very low i don't have any idea if i'm gonna be able to kill him or not but i figure i can get a, get a sense of where he is and oh yeah okay well that worked out <laughs> so now here finally arriving on the nine line i'm kind of where i want to be i'm in a position i can use my torpedoes Throw, out, throw them out in front of this Bismarck and do a little bit of kiting. Thankfully, the enemy Fuji that was spotting me, or Fiji that was spotting me, just went off the board. Got eyes on the Bismarck. We'll speculatively throw those out there and see what happens. Now, of course, he is a Bismarck. He has Hydro. He may, he may, he may turn it on. He might not. You just never know what you're going to get. So, take throw, you know, throw him down range and see what happens. Team's doing okay so far. We're up a kill, which is nice to see early. About four minutes gone. Just waiting for this Bismarck to show up again. Nobody really has eyes on him now. Our Nagato has charged up. Remember, there's a Fubuki in that gap over there. The Nagato is now dead because Nagato. So we were up a ship, and that's gone away now. Fubuki's already having a pretty good game. We make up a kill back, bagging a Pensacola on the other end of the board, and another quick kill, bagging a Lightning. So the team down at the opposite side of the map doing pretty well so far. This Bismarck has turned to come in to the Amagi, and so now I'm in a great position to fire my torpedoes, but I'm going to hold on to them because I don't know what this Amagi is going to do. You see the Amagi there? He's in about D8. He's got a bit of an angle to this Bismarck. The Bismarck secondaries are chewing him up. They're kind of chewing each other up, if I'm honest. The Amagi's guns are doing nasty things to this Bismarck, but I do not want to throw my torpedoes out there and risk 
torpedoing my teammate. I, I, I don't want to be that guy. So I'm intentionally holding these for the moment until that, that engagement kind of resolves itself. But I've got to run south. You can tell. I mean, once the Imagi goes out, and that'll probably be coming along shortly, there's an Edinburgh uh, and a Colorado kind of way back towards our cap circle, and then that's it. For me, anyway. Like, there's nobody else up here for the enemy team to shoot at besides me. So let's, let's kind of back off a bit and put some distance in here. Yamagi wins his duel with the Bismarck and manages to dodge some of those more of those incoming torpedoes from the Fabuki, who's over there on the 7 line. Fabuki overleads those a bit, and I push back up just far enough to start catching this Sharnhorst in the extreme edge of my, my long range. Start dumping some HE shells on him, see if we can pick up a kill. See if we can pick up a fire, excuse me. As the team's still holding a two-ship lead here, six minutes gone. Now, I catch the Sharnhorst's attention, but if you've been paying attention, if you've been watching him fire at me to this point, you'll notice that he has not fired AP. In fact, this particular Sharnhorst player doesn't seem to believe in firing AP at all because over the entire course of this game, you will not see him fire AP. So it, it does give me a little bit of... Um, uh, hubris isn't the word, but I guess maybe just... I, 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 I disrespect this guy. You're going to see me... like. Yeah, okay, I just took a bunch of HE shells on my belt, but his 283mm HE shells don't have enough penetration to get past my belt armor, which is honestly a little sad, but is true. More HE. If he aims this salvo a little better, and I think he does, if this one goes into my upper works a bit... Okay, he catches a stern there, gets a rudder and cap. He does get one salvo somewhere along in here with the HE. He puts most of it into my superstructure and gets about 4 or 5k out of it. Which, okay, now that he's not hitting my belt, that's kind of to be expected. I'd still be firing AP in his shoes. I have no idea why he's firing HE. I guess just inexperience, misunderstanding, I don't know. But he does get a decent... There it is. He gets about 3 or 4k out of that one. I lose him behind the island, and um, that's it. So very quickly, this game has devolved, right? We're, we're barely over seven minutes in, and already over half the enemy team is dead. They've lost seven ships in about seven minutes. Oh, but the f five surviving ships are the carrier, three battleships, and that Talon that we saw way back on the sixth line. Now, that guy is a cool customer. We're going to have fun with him later. So, so Frost, pay, pay attention. In fact, we're going to have fun with him now. I swapped to the AP with my expert loader, thinking that someone's going to drive this Talon into turning. Right? He's kind of... The Colorado doesn't really have a shot because of the island. I keep thinking maybe the Edinburgh will get a shot in on him and make him turn. Sir, surely somebody will make him turn. Doesn't happen. I'm kind of kind of waiting here. Again, I'm, I'm pulling up... Pulling up the... the pulling on the brakes. And I'm just waiting. Now, again, I'm speculating with the torpedoes. This is, this is something you're going to see me do a lot when you play Japanese cruisers. Just throw them out there and see what happens. As he comes around the island here, he will pick me up. And there he goes. He starts to turn to get all his guns on me. I've got the AP loaded. And this looks like a great salvo, and I just don't get much out of it. Of course, his salvo should really hurt. And he gets about 5k out of it, which is not... That's pretty respectable. I'm not going to complain. So, again, I've got a great-looking salvo going in, and it's just... What, am, what is happening? What is happening with these shells? Again, I'm showing him a little too much of an angle. Apparently, 14,000 damage. When that salvo came in in the game, I literally screamed out loud in my chair, what the... Yeah, it was it was not a pleasant word. Um, because I couldn't believe that I ate full pins at that angle. I still kind of don't, even now, watching it on the replay. So now, down under, you know, now, now under 4,000 HP, down to about 10%, 12% of my health pool, I have to completely change how I'm playing this game. The good news is my team and their aggression, this is working out well. I've got, but since the Sharnhorst is pushing down, he's slowly edging into my torpedo range, so I can kind of linger here in the 12 to 11 kilometer range and chuck torpedoes back in his face and hopefully land something. Our friendly Edinburgh is in the cap. He is now taking the enemy, uh, enemy carrier under fire. Hopefully he'll be able to get that cleaned up soon. That's just going to leave the Talin, the, the Mutsu, way back over on the two line who we can see. And he's got another battleship with him and I can't tell which one it is at the moment. But you can see here, I'm just, I'm biding my time with this Sharnhorst as I'm finally getting a little bit of help. The Champagne has come back to give me a hand. And the enemy Vesser has moved up. Now, he's moving up a little aggressively into these islands. I'm a little surprised to see this, but that's what he's doing. I land one Torp and a Flood on the Sharn Horse, so I know he had, to, he had to blow his DCP right then. So, we already had the HE in the barrels anticipating this. And, of course, he sees me. He thinks I'm tasty. 
he comes back with more of the HE salvo. There's the fire I was looking for. And now I'm now you're going to see me starting to play games with my speed. One of the things that I'll do when I play cruisers is especially when you're trying to dodge incoming fire, right? Most enemy most players will assume you're always moving at full speed. Most players do always move at full speed. One of the best things you can do to juke incoming fire is to constantly be mucking about with your speed. Now, it's not a, it's not foolproof, right? There are times that you'll just get hit anyway. However, you saw that salvo he just fired. It went over my head. Why? I pulled the handbrake. He overshot me. That salvo he fired blind. He had no idea where I was. I was already undetected. He took a guess and came up short. Friendly Champagne back there takes care of him he was only on about a thousand hp would have burned out soon i would have had that kill but whatever i don't really care so still on a solid lead here got a three ship lead moving into the middle of the board still just trying to be useful down to you know still on my 3800 hp doing my thing now friendly colorado has this mutsu spotted if i move up just far enough there we go he can no longer spot me over the island and i can through the island and i can lob shells over that island onto him trick is uh, to kind of guess at the the exact position of where those go. So I'm not going to land a bunch of these, but the fact that I'm basically getting these shots for free, you know, it's nice. I am, right now I'm kind of threading the needle. If you look at the minimap, you'll see I'm almost exactly in the cent dead center of the board. The Mutsu is in range. I can I can lob shells over at him, what shells I can get over the island. But the friendly Leon, oh, sorry, the enemy Leon up there on the two line is just outside my range. So uh, I'm keeping an eye on him. I, if I wander into his, into um, uh, where he's inside my... Uh, my detection bubble when I fire, um, then that will give everybody on the board the chance to shoot back at me. So I'm trying to intentionally slow down, speed up, steer, and, and avoid ducking into his detection range, which is 13.9, if I if I believe. There we go. 14.9. There it is. 14.9. Do finally bag a fire on the Mutsu. That's going to stick for a little bit. And on with this Leon on 3K, I decide to go full speed. I'm willing to I'm willing to risk a shot in on him to try and finish him off. We need him off the board. He's low enough, he needs to die. Now, unfortunately, both in both friendly ships that had gotten into the cap, that was the Edinburgh and the friendly New Orleans, they're both out now, as Colorado behind me cleans up the Lyon. That just leaves the Mutsu and the Talin. So we still have a two-ship lead, a 50%, a, excuse me, a 100% advantage in number of ships, but I'm only on about 3,800 HP here, so I gotta be very, very careful. Now... My guns are still trained to port. I'm looking for this Mutsu. I'm wondering where he is. I finally realized that one of the reasons he was backing up, and he was reversing a minute ago, you can see on the minimap he was starting to turn. It dawns on me finally, that guy is getting ready to turn around and drive back towards the cap circle. So I speculatively dump those torpedoes out there. Again, I don't really expect to get a whole lot out of those, and indeed, I won't. But it does also highlight the point for me that, hey, I've got my detection is 10 and change. I need to get, I need to back off so he can't spot me. And there I do finally pick him up at about 12 kilometers or so. Either me or the Colorado does. Some, somebody does. Now, I'm willing to take these shots. Yes, his guns are kind of looking in this direction, but he's not really moving. So they're, they're kind of, I won't say they're free shots because he's going to get to shoot back. But again, you'll see me pull the brake, turn out. He's going to overlead me and those shots are going to fall all down my port side. I'm really looking for a fire here. I'm, I'm hoping those torpedoes are going to land, but they aren't. They aren't going to land. And the Talin that I've forgotten about is in range of me, way up on the A-line. So I'm going to take one more salvo at this Mutsu, and then I am going to shut it down. I can't risk... Again, I, just like just like you saw me talking about in that Baltimore game last week, uh, the other day, I cannot risk getting... You know, I, can't, I don't want to die here, right? It's not worth it. Talin bounces some shells off my deck. I get incredibly fortunate dispersion from the Mutsu. And that's it. I'm dark again. Not shooting right now. Okay. Mutsu's got other things to worry about. He's turned around. He's got to deal with the Colorado. And the Talin in front of me should have to deal with the Champagne, who's up here off my starboard bow. The Champagne, though, what I don't know, and he's got a, a fair chunk of health right now. You never can see it on camera, but trust me. At the moment, he's probably got at least two-thirds HP. The Champagne is actually disconnected. Okay, he sails into that position, slowly sails to a stop. His secondaries go all crazy on this Talin when I get up here and spot him in a minute, but that's it. He never fires his main battery again. So I don't realize this at the time, right? I'm in, I engage this Talin over the next few minutes thinking I've got help. Surely I've got help. He's right there. It's a high tier battleship. Crush this guy, right? But it, it doesn't happen. Now, the Champagne's secondaries 
I mean, are doing good work, right? They're going to do work against this guy, but not fast enough. And, you know, the Talin is, is probably firing AP into his casemate because the Champagne is pretty pretty soft. So, I decide I want to get into this act if the Talin's going to show me this angle. Once again with the AP loaded. Once again with the thoroughly disappointing salvo of overpins. I'm not sure why I'm, I'm just habitually unable to really get solid pins on this guy. I, the very first salvo of the game, I did get some solid pins on him. If you saw it, it was about 6,600 or so. Ever since then, I have just struggled, and it just does not seem to happen. Once again, I'm living on borrowed time. The Talin misses every single one of those shells, which is a statistical anomaly, to say the least. Yes, I pulled the break, and he overshot me, but I still barely managed to find this little tiny narrow gap in there. I'm kind of waiting for him. He is burning. The Champagne's secondary set him on fire. I'm waiting for him to turn his guns back to the Champagne. Then I open fire again. But now this time, he's the one who jukes me. He pulls the handbrake. And those shells don't really land at all. I don't get very good dispersion there. We're both getting pretty low on HP. Neither one of us has a heal here. So this is very, you know, epic duel mono a mono kind of stuff. He does clip me for an overpin there. Friendly Vesser is trying to get up there and get in, but the reality at this point is the Vesser's planes are just exhausted. He's he's just he has almost nothing left. You can see in there he's got two rocket planes. The Talin's AA is more insufficient to knock those out of the sky. Now, once again, you see that Talin has, has done something incredibly smart. He's taken up a position where I don't have shots on him. He's reversing to get his guns back into action on the AFK Champagne. And I can see him because of the planes, and I'm kind of waiting for him to edge far enough back that my shells can sneak over this kind of the end of that island there. And I am going to drop one of those on him for like an overpen. Yeah, or a full pen, but it's an HE shell, so it's not a ton of damage. And just a moment, I'm going to look back. You're going to see the Champagne is on 500 HP. And that's at, the, that's it. it's, it's, it's at that moment that I realized, wait a minute, that guy's AFK, or 450 HP. Look at that. I'm like, wait, he's, he's disconnected or whatever. Fine. There he goes. So now it's just me, the Colorado, and this to Lynn. I'm into the cap now. The smart play is for me to work the bottom end of the cap, pull off, pull back down the three line or so, Wait for this Talin to come wander out, out here where I, you know, I can keep him spotted. The enemy, the friendly Colorado starts taking him under fire. But I'm at a point now where I've, I've had enough. I want this guy dead, and I think I can get him. He has a small health advantage. I just kind of knocked it out. He bounces some shells there. I need, to get, I need to get some shells or a fire on this guy. Although I think the fire he'd probably just be able to put right out. Let's see. I speed back up. More shells in on the bow. Good dispersion there. I do get a fire. But he manages to finish me off. This guy, this guy got a compliment at the end of the game, by the way. I did throw him a compliment. But if you noticed, before all this began, I threw torpedoes in this gap, figuring sooner or later he'd have to maneuver. And sure enough, he is. The friendly torpedo planes are coming in. And for some reason, my replay stopped. But I do bag him. He stumbles into one of those torpedoes. And I do, I do end up killing him right there at the very end. I'm not sure why the replay quit there. <laughs> but anyways... There we go. So again, another game that I'm I'm trying to highlight. You know, when you're in a when you're in a cruiser, man, look for positions of cover. Look for places that you can go, that you can wander into a pack, and and you know, if you're one target among many, they might not they might miss you, they might not see you in there. They might not uh, they might decide something else is more important. You'd be surprised how many battleships will pass up a shot at a cruiser on 2,000 HP when there's a like a, a huge health broadside battleship in front of them. They will, ab almost all of them will go for that damage shot. Almost all of them, right? So, you know, if you understand a little bit about kind of the psychology of some of the enemy players, you can sometimes get away with things that you might not otherwise be able to. And then sometimes they just punish you. Sometimes you roll the dice and lose. That's just the way it goes, right? Because you can never, you can never predict what an enemy is going to do. Certainly not in a random battle. And once you play enough games, you learn that the hard way. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Alba and the Japanese Cruiser Line are a ton of fun. I hope you enjoy playing those ships. Check them out if you haven't. In the meantime, wash your hands, be safe out there, and I'll catch you next time.